service, yeah. but for an encounter yeah. with the living King in the name yeah. of Jesus. Father, we pray before we leave this place, we will have felt the wind of God breathe on this place in Jesus' mighty name. We pray strongholds will be broken and that sickness will be eradicated from our bodies in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Flood this place. We pray for a river, Lord God, that will start at the ankles. Go to the knees. Go to the waist. Before we need a parking lot, we want water to swim in. We pray a bloodline around this place. Satan, the blood is against you. We decree freedom over this house. The word will go forward. We're not caught up in who's here, who's not here. You're here. In the name of Jesus. Shake this place. Shake it like it never been shaken before. Shake us out of lethargy. Shake us out of religion. Shake us out of every mindset that is not a part of the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 5 verse number 1 says this. It says, after this there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, hawk, withered, waiting for the move of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Somebody say whatever. Whatever. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been a long time in this case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Oh my God. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Yeah. And immediately, the man, I feel so pure. Immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day that was the Sabbath. I want you to announce it and don't say it like you're sassy and mean now, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the subject is, do you want to get well? Amen, 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 hallelujah, you may be seated. Do you want to get well? Amen, amen, the question that he poses is, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Sometimes we, we believe we do, but we have a mindset that's blocking uh, our wilderness. So we're going to talk about this today. And I really want to teach this and allow the Holy Spirit uh, to take over. And I believe that if you need healing in your body or healing in your marriage, in your life, your finances, that if you believe this, that God will release it uh, in your life. When we look at John chapter number five, uh, when we see what was going on in John four, uh, Jesus had just ministered to what we know, the woman at the wheel. He ministered to this woman and as he ministered to her. Uh, he brought a level of freedom into her life she had never seen before. The woman was in Samaria and Samaria was a place that normally didn't mix with Jews. And, and they had this, this, this kind of dis, uh, this disposition where Samaritans didn't like Jews. They had this fight, this strife going on between them. And Jews weren't even supposed to be caught in the presence of Samaria. So Jesus was really going to a place he wasn't even supposed to be in. But Jesus went to this place and he had already decided he was going to meet this woman. He knew that she was going to be there. So he positioned himself to be at the place where she was. And as he gets to the place where she is, it's amazing because he wasn't supposed to go there. Jews hated Samaritan. But Jesus said, I must need go to Samaria. In other words, he said, I got to go to a place where somebody's hurting. I got to go to a place where somebody needs deliverance. And as he gets there, the woman's at the well and Jesus gets there uh, and he poses this conversation with her and he begins to talk about what? to ask her uh, to give him some water and uh, she began to have this conversation about Jews don't mix with Samaritan and this yes. and Jesus said if you would have known who I was if you would have known who I was he said you would have asked me and I would have given you living water so here it is water asking for water 
And she thought that she wanted natural water, but Jesus was there to give her living water. And what he was literally saying is what you think you need ain't what you really need. I need you to obey your thirst. So, so, so as the woman finally get into it, he had to prophetically reveal what she was doing and, and began to let her know that he was the Christ and he was moving in the supernatural. And as he began to minister to her, the supernatural came forth and he said, where are your husband? And he just broke this down. He uncovered it so pretty. She said, I don't have no husband. He said, I know you don't. He said, you had five and the one you're with ain't yours. And, and he said, I perceive that you are a prophet. I think he is. And, and, and so Jesus ministered to her because he uncovered her need for him. Amen. And then all of a sudden he ministered to this woman and I'm going to move into John 5 and, and the woman began to prophesy and this woman ran away from the scene and she began to tell everybody in town about what Jesus was doing and she said, come see a man that told me everything that I ever done. How many of y'all know you got a real encounter with Jesus? You're going to tell somebody. Hallelujah. So as, as he moves and she goes, she begins to evangelize and she starts telling everybody about Jesus. That's why it's really out of order to say a woman can't preach because this woman went and preached the gospel to everybody she came in contact with. She said, I want you to know Jesus lives. He rules. He's Lord. He saved. The woman dropped her water pot. Her water pot represented her old life. <laughs> if you really want to change, you got to drop something. Somebody just be like that. <laughs> she dropped her water pot and ran to town and started telling everybody about this Savior. And now Jesus comes. He heals this noble man's uh, son and he heals this man. And now we get to John 5. He come across this man uh, who had been an invalid, who had been literally in this place for 38 years. And as he gets there, one encounter with Jesus changes his life. One encounter with him changed his life. I mean to tell you all it takes is one encounter with Jesus and your life will never be he has this encounter with this man this man is by the pool of Bethesda as the pool of Bethesda when we see that 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 word Bethesda literally means is house of mercy so the man is at a house of mercy and watch this he's at this pool and it's a bunch of sick people around the pool and, and the tradition is is that when they get there that if the angel come down and stir the water when the angel stirs the water, whoever get in will be made whole. And people was really getting healed. The amazing thing about that is that this man was stuck, had been there 38 years, and now Jesus shows up and he said, I'm going to heal you, but it ain't going to be by the method that you're used to. So, so, so what happens is Jesus ministers healing to this man and forever changes his life. And what we're going to do, y'all, y'all know I like to break down the text. We're not just going to open the scripture and never go back to it. Let's break it down. Look at verse number one. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now watch this. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. Now I'm going to break this down. Bethesda means house of mercy. For those of you writing, another thing it means is house of outpouring. Uh, one writer even says it means house of, of pity. And watch this. This is the place where sick people gather, and, and, and I'm not making light of anybody sick, but it's all these sick people around the pool, and it's almost like a bunch of people having a pool party that's all messed up. And they all come in here just hoping that we will get healed. And Jesus on this day comes to this place and calls this man out out of everybody and say, I want to personally heal you. I want to tell you today when God calls your number, you'll never be the same. So, so look at it in verse number two. It says, uh, which is called in the Hebrew term, Bethesda having five porches. Now watch this. Five is the number of what? Great grace. So, so, so it had five porches. And what they said at this time, by then having five porches, they said that these were like five porches that held the sick people up. So watch, five porches holding the sick people up. Five is the number of grace. Jesus is on his way. So what God says, until I come through, grace going to hold you up. That's better than you have to. 
so so they're, they're, they're at this place with five pools and, and one, oh my God, one translator said, a writer, he said he believed these five pools represented the law of Moses because it represented before Jesus got on the scene. So what happens is, and I believe that, is that before Jesus got on the scene, they had to do things, rituals and tradition in order to get healed. But when Jesus shows up, he's saying, you ain't got to go through all that. Just believe that I am who I am. Somebody give God a praise for that. So, so watch this. It says, and these lay uh, a great multitude of impotent folk, blind hawk, uh, waiting for the, the moving of the water. So, so there are three different type of folk uh, that's in this place. And these are three people that can show up at any given service, even, even in the church. You have the blind. That represent people that come to church but have no vision. Because why says you can be saved and still not have vision. So, so you have the blind. Uh, and then when you look at uh, verse number three, you also have the halt. That represents those that are paralyzed. This represents folks that are in God but are stuck. And what happens is sometimes God will come to a place where you are just to unstuck you. I know that ain't a real word. But he'll come to a place to get you out of a place where you're no longer stuck where you used to be. So you had the blind. Then you had the paralyzed. And in the third category, this person would show up at church as well. We all have issues, some type of issue. The third person that would show up is the lame. And lame is somebody who members is not working right. It's something in your life that's not functioning right. It's not moving the way it's supposed to move. And I don't care how spiritual we try to make ourselves look, whether you recognize it or believe it or not, it's something in your life that you wish was going a different way that is not going the way that it's supposed to go. And God says, I'm going to remove that lameness out of your life. Hallelujah. So, so, so watch this. It said the withered, the waiting, and they waited for the moving of the water. And then look at verse 4. Because I'm going to teach it and then give you some things that's going to help us get healed. Verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season. I want to go faster, but I got to slow down. That word season is the same word for time. And in the Greek, uh, the word is kairos. You have two types of time in the Bible, and they both has a Greek word. The first word for time is chronos, chronos right. and that's the time on the clock. It's chronological. It's right. one, two, three, four. And then you have the other time, which is kairos. Now, those of you that are writing, kairos is a set time. Right. Come on. It's a strategic moment that God is going to do something. So what he's saying with this word right here, he said literally he came down at a certain season. In other words, he said he came down at a strategic time. Why am I taking time to break this down? I want you to know you've been going through what you've been going through for a season. But God has a set time for your breakthrough. And he has your name on heaven's calendar. And I don't care how long you've been in it, how long you dealt with it, how long you had it. There's a set time for your breakthrough. I don't care if it's been 10 years, 12 years, 30 years. There's a set time. Somebody needs to realize your time has come for your deliverance. Your time has come for your breakthrough. Your time has come for your finances to shift. Your time has come for the business to begin. Your time has come. Can somebody praise God for your set time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Somebody says my season. My season. Yes, now go a little bit farther in the teaching. He says it came down at a certain season. That word is also the word that's found in Galatians six nine. It says, "And be not weary and well doing in due." Season. You shall reap. That's the same word season would mean stretch time. He said, if you've been going through something, don't get weary. Don't get tired. He said, don't get depressed. I don't want you to get sad. He said, if you keep on keeping on, if you keep on trusting God, if you keep on believing me and you don't faint and you don't fall out before the breakthrough comes, I guarantee you that a harvest is getting ready to come to your life. I don't know who this is that's been going through something for a long time, that's been dealing with 
with it for a long time. Yeah. And God says, if you don't get weary, if you don't give up, your breakthrough is on the way. Yeah. God strategically set you here to let you know you've been going through it for a long time. But your set time has come. And God wants you to praise you before it even shows up. Yeah. Somebody give God a praise in the place. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Watch this. Watch this. I feel this, y'all. Watch this. Says the angel went down. We got to teach. At a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after trouble into the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he has. Watch this. Minister Colin, watch this. He says, oh boy, he says, all right, you're going to get healed. Yes, come on. But before you heal, I'm going to let the angel trouble the water. Yes. All right. And it says, after the angel troubles the water, then you're going to be made whole. Mm. Troubled water represent difficult circumstances. Mm. Things that make you weary. Mm. So this is what it means prophetically. He says, before your healing come, I'll let your water get troubled. Mm. So what somebody need to know, the more troubled your water is, the greater your healing is going to be. Yeah. So write this down. Troubled water leads to healing. Yes. So if you're going through something that's trouble, God says right after that trouble, healing is getting ready to come. Yes. Right yes. after that trouble, yes. healing is getting ready yes. to break out. You're getting yes. ready to be made whole. Yes. Your darkest season leads to your brightest hour. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, oh my God. Now watch this. Watch yes. this. And then he says, whoever steps in oh. is made whole. Oh. Now watch this. Now I, I, I can swim a little bit, y'all. Oh. Just a little bit. I can swim, son. I can swim. And even my daughter, she loved to swim at a young age. So, so I like to swim. But what I notice, if the water's real cold, y'all know how many of y'all know we can be skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. Like we get to be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Unless it's one of those real fancy hotels with the warm pools. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so we're skeptical sometimes about getting in. And, and, and what happens is once we finally get down in it. Oh and y'all know how we do. We're like. Yeah. Ah. Y'all know y'all do that. Right. Then it's like. Ah. Ah. And then you finally get in it. Yeah. And finally you're swimming and you're having fun. Yeah. God says my promises are the same way. Sometimes when you get to it, you're skeptical because yeah. you don't want to be let down. But if you just step all the way in, yeah. if you just step all the way in, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm stepping in. I'm stepping in. I'm stepping into my miracle. I'm stepping into my breakthrough. I'm stepping into my new season. I'm stepping into my financial breakthrough. I'm stepping into my happiness. I'm stepping into my joy. I'm stepping into my new vocation. I'm stepping into another car. I'm stepping into a new house. I'm stepping into another neighborhood. I'm stepping into a different mindset. I'm stepping into a new dimension. I'm stepping into a different bloodline. I'm stepping in. I'm stepping in. Hallelujah. Somebody say I'm stepping in. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. I'm past the introduction now. Watch this. Watch this. He says, and trouble the water after trouble the water stepped in was made whole or whatever. Oh my God. I, I just feel this. I feel it to say this. I've seen this in my own life. I don't know who this is for. I'm going to slow down when I tell you this because I want you to know that God loves you. God will let you go through your worst seasons. Just so when he show up, you will know that it was only him and nobody else could do it. I don't know who that's for. I want you to know that God will let you get down to your lowest. One place says, and when they were at their wits end, right when you're at that place where you say, I can't take it no more. I can't do it no more. I can't go to that job one more day. I can't be in this marriage one more hour. Right when you're at that place where you're ready to give up, you'll go up if you don't give up. I'll say it again. You'll go up if you don't give up. You'll go up if you don't give up. Watch this. Ooh, oh, and I got, I got so much I want to share with y'all in a little time. Watch this. Mm. 
he specifies the time. Mm. And watch this. Ain't it bad when they know you, the only thing they know you by is your illness? Because oh. yeah. yeah. you know, even people will do that. Somebody say, people will do people that. Do people will do that. People do that. I, I mean, a certain man that had an illness for 38, they didn't even know his name. I don't know who this is for. But God is getting ready to heal you from that thing that has labeled you. Ooh, amen. I just spoke something over somebody's life. God is getting ready to heal you over that thing the enemy has tried to label you with. Because he'll place something on you so you'll never step into your identity. You'll never step into who you really are. And you're going by, that's the girl that was raped. That's the girl that was molested. That's the one that got a divorce. That's the one who husband left her on Valentine's Day. That's the one that didn't have a daddy growing up. That's the one down the street that nobody liked. That's the one that stuck with the whole neighborhood. That's the man that was in prison. That's the man that could never get a job. That's the one that everybody in his family went to jail. That's the one that had a label. And God says, I'm getting ready to remove the label. Can somebody give God a praise in this place? Oh, God. Praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your breakthrough. Praise him for your miracle. Praise him for the removal of the label. Thank you, Father. Somebody shout your way out that label. Hallelujah. This is powerful. Let me say this. I, I got to move a little further. I got about 27 minutes and 32 seconds. Watch this. In verse number five, he said a man had an infirmity for 30 and eight years. He specified the length of the illness. And when I was studying it, this is powerful. They said many times what they would do, they would talk about how long they had it. To let people know this was the length of the time. And the reason they would let them know how long they had an illness is because when Jesus showed up, he would get more glory for healing you from something that you had since birth and for a long time. Yeah. And he would let it go on so long that when Jesus shows up, they specified the time to let them know no matter how long you've been in something. When God steps in. Amen. When God steps in. Hey. And, and so they would say the time just so when they show up, they say, okay, he had this 12 years. But when Jesus showed up, can somebody say when Jesus showed up? When Jesus showed up. All right, amen. We got to go on to the next verse. Watch what it says. It says in verse number. Now, 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 let me, let me slow down for a little bit. Uh, what it says here, it says a certain man had an infirmity for 30 and 8 years. 30 is the number when we study numbers, 30 is the number of divine perfection and divine order. It's different from seven, but it's the number of divine perfection and divine order. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So he had been sick 38 years. Wow. Divine perfection and divine order. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Right. He said, it's the perfect time for this man to have a new beginning. <laughs> it's the perfect time. I don't know who this is for. It's the perfect time for you to have a new beginning. I don't know who that is. I don't know what your past is, but I want you to know it's the perfect time for you to have a new beginning. Yes. It's the beginning of the year. It's the yes. perfect time for you yes. to start this year out with a shout. Don't go into this year scared. Don't go into this year tiptoeing. Don't go into this year talking about how bad it was last year. Don't go in saying, I went through this last year. I went through that. You step in saying, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise 
Jesus shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the of and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Can somebody give God a praise in this place? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Verse 6. We're almost there, y'all. We're almost there. When Jesus saw him lie, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, he said to him, Will thou be made whole? Now, watch this. The subject I use was, Do you want to get well? Another translation says, Do you want to get well? I got to break this thing down. I got like 20, 19, I have a many minutes left. Watch this. And I, I want to paint a picture. I'm going to slow down that we can really get this. Jesus walks up to a man. This man lying down on a mat, y'all. He's sick. He obviously hoping he get in the pool so he can be made whole. And Jesus says something that's really almost insulting. Because imagine this. You standing there waiting, hoping you get in the pool, and Jesus walk up to you. You want to get well? Mm-hmm. I mean, that almost sounds cold. Mm-hmm. So, so I break things down. I interrogate it. I say, why would Jesus ask him, do you want to get well? Because watch this. Jesus didn't say that to be cold. Mm-hmm. He said that to stimulate the man's hope and raise his faith. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because you can get in something so long and stay there so long, you get comfortable. Mm-hmm. Come on, come and Jesus on. says, I <laughs> Jesus said, I got to remove you from your comfortability. I got to, I know I made that up too. He said, I got to remove you from this place where you're okay with being not okay. I got to get you to think that a better day is coming. I got to get you to believe that it's something better than just laying there. I got to get you to believe that there's a better man out there for you. I got to get you to believe that God has another job for you. I got to get you to believe that you're body will be healed. I gotta get you to believe you don't have to be like your family. You don't have to do like what everybody else did. I know everybody went to jail, but you're the generational interrupter. You're the generational changer. You get ready to change the game. Can somebody praise God in this place? Hallelujah. He said, do you want to get well? Now watch this, y'all. Now this funny, y'all. And, 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 and watch this verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir. And I started doing it when I was reading, but I like to do voices and get, I can be a little dramatical at times. You know, a little extra, you know. But uh, <laughs> the impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me. Now that sounds like I'm being cold But that's the mindset he had So watch this This is my question Did he answer the question No. He never really answered the question Jesus said Do you want to get well And he started rehearsing the problem I'm about to break this thing down He never said yes Come on Jesus said, you want to get well? And he said, every time I get ready to get down there, my cousin and them go before me. Ray Ray and them get in. I'm the only one left here. You're right. Answer the question, man. <laughs> he never answered the question. So watch this. He rehearsed. Bring it back to me, Lord. He rehearsed the problem. And still are reciting his promise. And I ain't trying to be insulting or nothing. But sometimes we don't get well. Because we spend so much time rehearsing the problem. And still are reciting the promise. You got the healer standing in front of you and you telling them everything your cousin and them did and, and how they stepping in front of you and you ain't had your pool card and stuff. <laughs> I know I just threw that in. But you know, gotta make it a little interesting. He, he rehearsing all of that and Jesus said, you want to get well. Wow. So watch it. 
Therein lies the problem. Yeah. All right. He made his problem so big that even when the answer came, he wouldn't receive it. Uh -huh. well, that's rich. And watch this. Instead of rehearsing the problem, you have to recite the promise to reverse the problem. I got to quit focusing on everything that's going wrong. Now, I know I might lose somebody right here, but some of us in here, it's hard for us to get a breakthrough because we talk about it too much. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and I got some man in here sitting by their hood, you, sitting by their wife, you better be careful. Cause, but but sometimes it may be a woman, it may be a man, and all we do is, I don't like this and I don't like that. And God said, that's why your breakthrough hasn't came yet, because you're releasing the wrong words out of your mouth. You got to quit talking about what's going wrong and start quoting the word of God. You got to start saying, yeah, they told me it's cancer, but by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. You got to quit saying, I got this messed up mind and say, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. You got to stop saying, I'm so broke, broke, I can't pay attention and say, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could even ask for Thing. You got to stop saying, oh, these times are so hard and it's so dark and I don't like the way it's going in my life. And you got to start saying, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You got to stop talking about how scared you are because everybody dying around you and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me to lie down and bring pastor. He lead me beside still waters. Restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with all. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. I'm getting a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I'm getting my healing in the name of Jesus. I'm getting my deliverance in the name of Jesus. I'm getting ready to walk through this thing in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, abounding, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Somebody give God a praise in this time. Shout God, you get ready to come out. Somebody need to say, I'm getting ready to come out of this situation. I'ma step into my destiny. I'ma step into my purpose. I'ma step into my healing. I'ma step in for my child. I'ma step in for my mother. I'ma step in for my father. I'm getting in this water and I'ma be made whole. Jesus. Oh, 
and, and, and I'm gonna give you the three things, and because I got like seven or eight minutes, I'm gonna give you the three things because somebody been dealing with even a particular illness in your body that the enemy has tried to make you think you're just gonna deal with it, and what you're gonna tell the enemy, you're gonna start quoting the scripture and say, "Devil, you deal with that." You're gonna start putting scriptures in his face. Amen, amen. So watch what verse number eight says. So watch this. And verse 7, and I'm going to give you the three things to wrap it up, y'all. And, and before we leave, if you believe in God for something, come to the altar. We want to pray with you because I believe that if you came here, it was by divine destiny. God ordained okay. it. Watch verse number 7. So the infinite man, remember, he never did give the answer. But watch this, y'all. And verse number 8. <clears throat> now, oh, my God, and I, 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 could, I couldn't leave this out. I got nine minutes. I can break this down. I want to say this to make sure I don't say it sound insensitive but Jesus was kind of direct with this man well, Jesus didn't pet yes, him yes, yes. He, he didn't play patty cake he didn't, yes. so, so if you look at verse number 8 mm. even when Jesus get to the man yes. Jesus didn't walk up to him after the man started talking about it how everybody went in front of him Jesus ain't said oh bless your heart <laughs> 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 he, he didn't do that he, he didn't say well I feel so bad for you. <laughs> I, I, I just want you to know, I came all the way from Jerusalem hoping I can help you. He, he, he didn't say, you know, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, did your mom and them have it as well? Right, right, right. Are you okay? I just want to know, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. He didn't say none of that. Jesus said, rise! Yeah. Take up your bed yeah. and walk. In Jesus' name. Now watch this. I'm going to break that thing down. The reason Jesus was so direct with him, and I don't know what it is for, because watch this. You can get and be in something so long. Oh, I, I got I to gotta break it all the way down, what, what, what I got when I was studying. Watch this. In, in verse number five, it said, which had an infirmity. That word had, I broke it down when I was studying in the Greek. It means to wear. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. So this would happen. Wow. You can have something so long you wear it. Yeah. And then what happened, it also means to like get settled in with. Mm -hmm. So you can get so settled in with your issue that watch this. And God loves us. He's not making fun of what we went through. But even if somebody was violated, whatever it may be, if we're not careful, we can let the world and the enemy put a victim spirit on us. And we can get to a place where something that happened 30 years ago makes us become a victim the rest of our life. And we'll lie there and we'll keep that pad and keep our bed and carry it. Because sometimes, whether we admit it or not, sometimes if we're not careful, we may like the attention. So we can, oh my God, we can get married to pity. Because I, oh yeah, I remember what happened to you, and then every time you feel like you need a little tent, you know what happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, sugar. You're right. And so we can get married to pity. And Bethesda, one of the writers said it meant house of pity. So this was a place that was full of pitiful people. And they were so caught up in being pitiful that it was hard for them to even acknowledge the Savior. And hard for them to even imagine being healed. And they went through a formula of waiting on an angel to stir the water. But they were so pitiful that even when Jesus showed up, you noticed that everybody didn't stop what they was doing and run to Jesus. Because they were so so connected with pity, you got to drop the pity and get your promise. So Jesus comes up to him and Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now watch this, y'all. The reason why Jesus done that is because you got to be aggressive with pity. Yes, Lord. If you ever get to where you're feeling sorry for yourself, yeah. you got to be aggressive with it. Because watch this. You can't be pitiful and powerful. You can't be pitiful and powerful. If you're going around like this, 
<laughs> yeah, do you remember? Yeah. Uh huh, seven years ago. Yeah, it, it's been 32 years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, 22 years ago, lost my job. Lost my benefits and all that. How long has it been? 32 years. You forget. Give a different number. <laughs> How long has it been, child? Hold on, let me go check my calendar. Yeah. I went and checked, it's been 34 years, lost my job, lost everything. Hey. Everything, honey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. So we get married to pity. We do. And Jesus has to get us to divorce our pity. Oh. And it doesn't mean we didn't go through something. Mm -hmm. But we got to say, you know what that happened? But what happened to me is not, not me. me. Amen. I just said something. I feel the anointing right there. What happened to you is not you. Whatever you went through, it does not define you. There was a moment in your life you were hurt, you were violated, you were betrayed. But that's not the sum total of who you are. Once you become saved, God puts a new plan, a new destiny, a new purpose. Can somebody praise God that what happened to you is not you? This is for some woman that was hurt at a young age. God said, that's not you. That's not who you are. For the woman who daddy never gave you love. Never gave you love that does not define you. You have a heavenly father. There is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I don't even know who this is. It's somebody in here. You weren't even raised by your real parents. They just somebody gave you to somebody else and say, I can't handle them. I can't deal with them. Foster family. Somebody else sent them to such and such house. I'm not saying if somebody sent you to such, such and such house that they're not right, but somebody felt rejected at a young age and your parents couldn't deal with raising you. And God wants you to know that even in the switch of your address, he did not switch your destiny. He did not switch your purpose. He still has a plan for your life and what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for your good. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Oh God, there's healing taking place. The last thing I'm going to say, I got two minutes to do this, write it down. I'm not going to preach three points and keep you here a whole, a whole hour. I'm going to give you the three things that we got to do. It's right here. It's, I can do it in two minutes. Three things we need to do, and it's in one. Y'all, it's in one verse. It's all in verse eight. And y'all, what I just did, I walked through each verse because I think sometimes it can be a lack of biblical teaching, mm -hmm. and people may just open the Bible and never go back to it. Mm -hmm. But but we went verse by verse, and look at what he says in verse eight. In verse eight is our promise, and I'm gonna give you three things that you got to do if you want to get well. Mm -hmm. Number one is rise. Mm -hmm. Somebody say rise. rise. That word rise means to move to another place with expectancy. Rise. I don't know who this is, but it's been some woman and, and some man in here that's been depressed. And depression means to be pressed mm -hmm. down Come on, Pastor. in your emotions. Yes. And I don't know who this is for, but God is saying even in your mind, I want you to rise. Rise out of that depression. Rise out of that sadness. Shake that thing off you and say, I'm a child of God. I can worship because I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say rise. rise. Second thing you have to do, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. That's number two. If you want to get well, take up your bed and walk. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now that principle there, number two, it means this. Get up from where you are. It, it means you've been there too long. I don't know who this is for, but God is saying, get up from where you are. 
You've been there too long. You know who you are and you're depressed for five months. And it's not wrong to be depressed when you're a child of God. You're not too anointed to be depressed. You're too anointed to stay depressed. Get up from where you are. Pick up your bed. God showed up Elijah was a prophet. Oh. It's a kid. He was depressed. Yes. And God showed up at this place where Elijah was. He was depressed. Talking about taking his own life because of one woman named Jezebel. Yep. Hmm. And God said these words. What doest thou here, Elijah? Oh. Now watch this. Elijah's name means Jehovah is God. Oh. So he said his name to remind him of who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, what are you doing here, Jehovah is God? You done forgot who I am. When you remember who he is, you're going to drop that bed and start running. When you remember who he is, you're going to drop that bed and start running. Last thing, and I'm through, y'all. Last principle, walk. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. That means it's time for progress. That means it's time for you to begin to move into your next place in God. Yes, yes. That means it's time for you to go after your destiny and go after your purpose yes. and go after who God has made you to be. It's time for you to walk. Your depression has stagnated you. Your depression and sadness and that even that disease and that sickness has tried to make you think you'll never come out. you got to start walking. And if you want to see what you've never seen before, you got to do what you've never done before. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah! I'm doing an altar call now. I'm finished. Give God a big hand clap of praise. I don't know why I felt this, but even when I sat there, I got up and I always pray before I get up. I told God I was I was on my face right there praying. I said, God, I don't want to grow up without your presence. Yeah. Cause you know what I feel in here? We at a place where we can't play with God. It's, yeah. it's too many people that have needs. Yeah. And God is here to meet those needs. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in here and you need prayer, come to the altar. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to do the altar call like this. Whoever in here needs prayer, I'm going to ask the same question I said with the message. Do you want to get well? Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. 